If you're seeing this message, that means the original version of this video, though the discussion we're in was transformative in nature, therefore making it comply with the fair use, has been blocked on copyright grounds. So this video is a re-upload consisting of little to no audio-visual content from the episode, basically making it a review. This video will consist of all of my discussion related to the episode, as well as my bonus, which is basically my blooper reel. Hope you're having a wonderful existence, unless you're an asshole, just kidding. Hope you're having a wonderful existence. <laughs> mm. <clears throat> Chantel from Chantel is probably sorry. This is Black Lightning season one, episode three, called Lawanda, the Book of Burial, or just Book of Burial. I don't know what happens in this episode, but based on the thumbnail, I'm looking forward to it. Just based on a thumbnail for this, it looks like um, Anissa is training, which means we get to see more powers. Also, I'm gonna try to make this more review heavy than reaction heavy. I'm kind of gonna try to make my Black Lightning videos in general more review heavy than reaction heavy. <sighs> Soundtrack A1. Jesus. Sing the gospel, y'all. I'm sorry I keep freaking out over Jill Scott, y'all. It's just who I am. Hey. Oh, it's new girlfriend. I'm sorry. Do you need me to get out of your way? Sounded like I moved in. Young folks with outsized powers traveling the world. Knocking bad guys on their asses. Meta's how well, DC characters talking about DC characters. Do you want to give my daughter athlete's foot in places where athlete's feet should not be? I, I didn't mean so. to hear that. I don't think so. <laughs> oh, is it that cosplay thing? <laughs> yep. <laughs> no, stop. Cut it out, please. Uh -uh. No, 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 no. 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 <laughs> no. No. No, I don't... <laughs> I'm uncomfortable. It hasn't even happened yet. <sighs> Witnessing real-life confrontation and fictional confrontation makes me uncomfortable. I don't like it. I just want to escape. Like, I don't need to be a witness to this. It's time to leave, so. It's gonna be okay, right? I, um, I don't know. He's not gonna be okay, is he? Okay, okay. This is some rude shit. Are they about to kill this little boy? A bullet hit his spine. That was by Lightning 103, Lawanda the Book of Burial. Burial. There are so many ways to pronounce different words. Let's not start. I'm sorry. I didn't actually write down a lot to say, which is disappointing, but I'm pretty sure that the three things I wrote down to say I could talk about for a long time, so I'm gonna kinda just give a summary or a fun-sized version of these topics. Whether this episode did this on purpose or not, there were kind of a lot of cultural indicators in here or lots of subjects revolving around the culture of African Americans in the United States, particularly in the South, but still United States. In some ways, if you caught it, a bit of commentary on culture and cultural differences. When Jen just was like, I'm having sex on Saturday. I was like, yo. And the second that she said, like that she, she was like, I think I'm ready to have sex now. I was like, that wouldn't fly with my mom. My mom aversion. I don't think she even watches this far into the video, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> but even that right there. Though there are many different cultures that exist in this country, and you might have a certain culture that fits with a certain demographic of people, that doesn't mean that every single person in that demographic will abide by their culture or abide in the culture that they were brought up in or maybe they weren't brought up in that culture. Maybe they don't fit in that demographic according to culture. But I mean, we're all just people, so it doesn't really matter. Well, it does matter, but that's a different conversation. I'm not having it today. If I had kids, I would also 
encourage them to talk to me and encourage them to be honest with me in whatever they do whether it be about their feelings whether it be about a shitty situation they've gotten themselves in whether it be about sex I would want them to come and talk to me because I'd rather them talk to me than try to keep it a secret and end up getting themselves in a lot of trouble or pregnant or not even having the proper education on safe sex and end up with an STD that they can't get rid of. I'd rather them come to me than not. So when Anissa's girlfriend, now ex-girlfriend, oh yeah, I was gonna give a recap of the episode. Mm. <laughs> I'll see how that goes. When Anissa's ex-girlfriend, who I never knew her name, G G Gina? Gina? Jesus, I'm Lynn. China, nope. Don't remember it. <laughs> she was like, something along the lines of, I can't believe Miss Black Lives Matter is like cheating on me with an Asian girl. When she said that, I was like, okay, but Black Lives Matter isn't anti everyone else, or at least it's not supposed to be. And that's the thing, and I, I don't know if I've said this before on my channel. No, I haven't said this on my channel, but I know I've said it in conversation before. That's the thing about every single group that says that they stand for something. There will always, always, always be people in that group that are either extreme with it or who contort the ideology of the group into something it was never intended to be. And then the rest of society only pays attention to those people because Black Lives Matter is not supposed to be anti-white. Being pro-black does not make you anti-white. Being anti-white makes you anti-white and black lives matter is not supposed to be anti-white but i i'm sure i know that there are members of black lives matter or people who support black lives matter who are anti-white just like there are christians who are homophobic when that's not what the religion is supposed to be about just like the feminists who make everyone hate the word feminism and i could go on and on there are always going to be members of groups usually ideological groups who will transform it into something that it was never meant to be and then that's all people will think of when they think of that group like the people who think that black lives matter are are terrorists or something and i'm like where y'all get that from but then of course it's from whatever they've seen of the members of black lives matter who hold these beliefs but then there is also this i'm not gonna call it a phenomenon but there is a pattern we see it's not just applying to black culture it applies to kind of all cultures as soon as you date outside of your race or love someone outside of your race it can be seen as an issue in the culture even if it's not an issue with people who are close to you because of the way we're socialized because of maybe even genetic drives and instincts but regardless the reason there's always going to be that oh so your own people aren't good enough for you mentality and sometimes that mentality is true and other times it's not and i think that concept when it comes to black people is especially i don't want to say relevant or poignant. The reason it matters so much in black culture as opposed to other cultures, though it also does matter to other cultures, the reason it matters so much in this society is because of colorism, is because of racism, is because of ingrained self-hatred, is because of a society that tells you your skin is ugly and your facial features are ugly and you are ugly and you're never meant to be anything than a nigger. So dates back to minstrel shows, dates to the stereotypes, dates to slavery even. And the factors leading up to all these things aside, there is current day racism. And there's also this mentality of us versus them. And I mean, that mentality is present in many places. I'm just talking about the, it's, it's always us versus them. Unless you're the type of person who just thinks of people as people, but our brains aren't like that. You have to actively think that way. You don't just think that way. Unless you grow up in an area where you're completely unaware of racism and then you're like racist without knowing you're racist and you think that it's just because everyone loves each other when it's really you don't know you're being racist. I've seen that a lot. It's kind of like this, it's like you meet someone who's oblivious and they're like, oh, this doesn't exist, but whatever different story. There's this us versus them mentality that can play into people's opinions of you if you're dating someone outside of your race or ethnic group or whatever. 
So myself personally, I don't really, okay. I don't care about interracial dating if you're just dating each other because you love each other and that's it. Like, you know, you love this person. But if you're dating interracially specifically because you hate your own race or if you like bash people in the process, that's when I start to have a problem with it because I think that's completely unnecessary and unhealthy for any culture. Like the black men who only date white women because they want biracial babies or for whatever reason, but then bash black women in the process. Like again, different conversation. But yeah, I think that's the only circumstance in which I would actually care. But then there are also fetishes, which is a different conversation, but there are people who have fetishes for people of color or people of other races even. That's another conversation. And the last thing I wrote down was the coming out. Last episode we learned that Anissa is out and her parents know and her parents are accepting, which can be a rare thing in the black community or is not the, the dominant nature of the black community. Especially if we're talking about southern black community, especially if we're talking about Bible Belt black community. Anyway though, we found out she was open with her parents and they were supportive and even though I didn't say anything about it, that was a pleasant surprise for me. And then we saw more of that this episode where, you know, her coming out experience was a good one. Not everyone's coming out experience is good at all. Shit, sometimes coming out gets you killed. Just saying. It's just pleasant to see how supportive the parents are of Anissa and her sexuality and of Anissa and Jen in general, how supportive the family is of each other. That's just such a, a refreshing dynamic. But I think I'm done for the day. I was gonna do an episode recap, but considering how I've been talking for like um, maybe 15 minutes already, I'm done. <laughs> oh, so thank you for watching. Like the video if you liked it. I mean, I said some stuff that can be considered controversial whatever i really don't give a damn oh this is probably gonna get demonetized oh well i don't make money anyway but that was supposed to lead into me saying i guess if you want to comment comment and you can check out my channel my playlist and my descriptions to see what else i do and what else i watch and subscribe if any of those things interest you hope you're having a wonderful existence and i guess that brings me to oh you guys can see my um <laughs> bye That's done. <laughs> I opened the link that my friend sent me and I literally just sat there and watched the whole thing. I was like, yo. It gave me flashbacks though to when I was a kid. Sorry, I'm stretching. It gave me flashbacks to the point where <laughs> like I was in elementary school because it was like this little ass boy singing to this little ass girl. Like a love song of sorts. Oh God. And then I wrote this love song when I was nine. My mom will let, let it go. She's always singing it to me. She's like, how you fall in love in third grade? I'm like, mm. <laughs> Moms are like, you did fall in love. <laughs> if you don't write a thank you note, it's as if the good thing never happened. I forgot to thank you for my Christmas this presents. That doesn't mean that every single person, person, get angry. She's not the whole. Hope you're having a wonderful existence, unless you're an asshole. Just kidding. Hope you're having a wonderful existence. <laughs> mm. <clears throat> Hope you're having a wonderful existence, and I guess that brings me to. Oh, you guys can see my um. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> They're pajamas.